Many apologies. There, now we got the sound going on. Well, we've got more people watching now than when we started, so that's good news. You know what? I've had a bad day. I have. I've had a bad day, and I could sit here, and I could renumerate every single instance of my day where I had a bad day. But that wouldn't serve a purpose. I might feel relieved uh, for getting this off my chest, but whatever. I'm just going to... It's not going to bother me. It's not going to own the rest of my evening. I am surrounded by a number of classy individuals. I have with me a classy stogie and a gentlemanly glass of scotch. What more could man want? How else could I cheer myself up than to be interfacing with you fine people? So, you know what? Chuff. Chuff rubbish and pshaw. I will not let such things get on my case. So there you go. Time for me to pull up your fan art because you fine ladies and gentlemen have been good enough to present me with a number of, of uh, uh, wonderful and fantastic bits of artistic valor. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen, to your artistic valor. But what's wrong with me? I get ahead of myself. Before we can uh, show off your artistry, we have we must first light the cigar. That's right. Today I am smoking an Afuente Gran Reserva, and uh, uh, this fine stogie is a little bit different than uh, its brothers that I have smoked here cheerfully on the program. Uh, my face is a little dark. I wonder if I could... How's that? Am I now in the light? Yeah, I'll work on this. I'll figure it out. Uh, but first got to cut the cigar. So here we go. Cheers. Oh man, it's got a little bit of... Oh, that's right, because I haven't lit it yet. Oh, that's kind of important. Do, 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 do. As you can see, it's got a bit of an interesting point to it. I am busy eating, says Ah, oh, sorry to part so soon, but I have to go. Uh, quite a bummer that you have to leave, but quite understandable. Pleasure to have you here as long as we did. All right, time to show off some fan art. Actually, I was submitted, uh, I was given a fan video by a really talented fan that I need to find. All right. I had all the tabs up before I had to restart my computer. So give me a moment while this thing loads. Shadowmist says I still need my password to log on to Oxhorn.com. Shadowmist, my friend, uh, you you don't need to log into uh, Oxhorn.com. You can, in fact, uh, simply log in with your Facebook account or your Twitter page to post a comment. Actually, no, that's not true. That's here at ScotchAndSmokerings.com. My bad. I have so many websites that I hardly know the sign-up process for all of them. Tell you what, use the password retrieval form at Oxhorn.com, and I'll be sure to send you a new password. All right. Wow. Not bad. Uh, Daydreamer says, Hey, Ox, did those free Cuban cigars ever turn out after some time in the humidifier? Wow. Old time Oxhorn fan. This is a, this is a retro question, if, if, if that is such a thing. Uh, yeah, I think that was like a year and a half ago or something. <laughs> uh, no, they didn't. Free Cuban cigars are horrible. Never buy free Cuban cigars. They're nasty. All right. I want to show off this video that you guys sent me. If I can find it. It was from... No, not from... Y'all. Yeah, here it is. Uh, in fact, I'm going to open it up in a new browser. Hold on. There we go. So, this is a video... Uh, it's really, really great talent here. This is a video, uh, video by Per Grunet. And what this uh, classy gentleman has done is sung a fan version of my song, Lovely, You're Lovely, set 
to the lyrics of Ave Maria. So is anyone familiar with the Latin hymn Ave Maria? It's very beautiful. It's really lovely. And it's been, a, you know, tradition for people to create new versions of Ave Maria to different songs. There are a dozen different versions of Ave Maria, right? And so what this fine gentleman has done is created a new version based on my music, Lovely or Lovely. So we are going to go ahead and take a look at it. All right, pressing play. How does one press play? Let me know if you can see it, if you can hear it. Awesome. All right, it's about two minutes long, but it's worth it. This guy spent a lot of time singing this song, set to my lovely, your lovely song. Calm down, calm down, everything is still going smooth. Apparently showing you my screen did that, so at least now you can still hear the song. Lovely work, Pastor Per Grunet. That was uh, a lovely fan tribute uh, to uh, using my song "Lovely or Lovely." Uh, I really enjoyed it. Man, that guy's got an awesome tenor voice, doesn't he? The vibrato. The, the dude just he just blew me away. So I'm gonna send out a link to this video on Twitter later and Facebook. Please go uh, uh, go like it, watch the video, give this guy a thousand views. I think you'd really appreciate it. So that was a lot of fun. All right, uh, I've got some actual, like, JPEGs to show you. If I can do this without crashing the internet. All right, there we go. So this was a, f a piece of fan art by Greg Hartung. Um, Sharon, elf eliminating extraordinaire. <clears throat> extraordinaire. And then you've got my beautiful wife over here saying, no mercy for the unworthy. And she's running around as a hunter with her pet. Killing elves, of course. Uh, beautiful Sharon killing lots of elves. As a blood elf, though, so... Eh, eh, eh. That's okay. I'll, I'll forgive the blood elf for now. At least she's killing elves. And then this one, <laughs> submitted by Loranicus. Meanwhile, in the land of smoke ships... Oh, that's right. A, uh, a pink unicorn smoke ship. So that was... Uh, that was a pretty good one there by Loranicus. Thank you for that. I'll try to get all that fan art up on the website in time for Monday's update. All right, uh, I had everything set up and ready for the show, but of course we had our little hiccup. Should I give me a second here? Um, okay. So, now, earlier today, I made a casual tweet. I went on to, like, Facebook and Twitter, and I, and I said, uh, oh, no, this was last night, and I said, uh, uh, sitting in my house in my robe, smoking a cigar while wearing my scotch glass and mustache socks. And then I got a lot of messages from fans saying, scotch glass and mustache socks? What on earth? So I, I had many of you ask to see them and I figured I would show them to you. These, these are freshly laundered by my beautiful wife. And as you can see, they have uh, mustaches and glasses of scotch on them. You know, I just, I figured if I was going to have a show called Scotch and Smoke Rings, 
you, you can't do it without mustache and scotch socks. Right? I, I would I hope that it would have been a beard, you know, but at least they got half of it. They got the mustache part, and they're pretty gentlemanly. Uh, gentlemanly socks going on there. So uh, thank you to my lovely wife for pointing them out to me at the shop. I went ahead and got them. They were great. I got to admit, they were pretty great. All right. Don'ts for wives. Uh, because I don't have my don'ts for husbands. I, I don't see it here. Bummer, I guess we can't give the husbands instructions today. I guess we're just going to have to give instructions to wives. All right. You know, that's fine. I'm not going to not gonna go out of my way to find the other book. It's missing. All right. Don'ts for wives. Written in 1913. Here we go. <clears throat> don't open the door for yourself when your husband is present he would open it for a lady guest let him open it for you besides your boys will not learn the little courtesies that count nearly so well by precept as by example very true don't let your husband make you selfish and don't you make him selfish either if there is one specially comfortable chair that you both like, don't let him always put you in it, and don't persuade him to always sit it in himself. Turn and turn about is a very good rule. All right, all right, this is good advice, wives. Pay close attention. These guys are speaking from the grave here. Don't work yourself into a fever every time your husband omits to turn up at the expected time. He is, in all probability, neither run over by a motor car, nor robbed and murdered on his way home, nor lying in a lonely land with a sprained ankle, nor in any other of the terrible predicaments your imagination pictures. Wives. Probably he stopped at the bookstall to buy an evening paper, and so missed his train. So don't greet him hysterically when he does arrive. <laughs> oh my uh, I, I, I think I'll keep going one more one more for the evening don't think it beneath you to put your husband's slippers ready for him on a cold evening especially it makes all the difference to his comfort if the soles are warmed through ladies set your husband's slippers out for him don't be barbarians now we're not philistines no we are classy individuals, living in a classy age of warmed slippers when he comes home. Ah, oh, the past. I love it. And look at that ash. Look how long that ash is staying on this cigar. That's over an inch. This, my friends, is a quality stogie. Cheers. Ha! <laughs> what? I'm not hearing anything, lol, says my beautiful wife. Ah. Ah. Bottoms up. What brand asks what Randorin? That's a pretty nice cigar, says J Mixer. Uh, this is an Al Fuente Gran Reserva. Great cigar so far. I've smoked a number of these, but not one uh, in this particular shape. I forget exactly what it's called, but it's got a little nib at the end that you liked. It, it, it makes for an even burn. As you can see, it's a fairly even burn all the way around. Did my... Okay, Nova Domina in chat says, tap that ash. Really? Really, Nova? Tap that ash? My own wife. <laughs> okay. You know what? I need to show myself up now. All right, I'm feeling better. Whew, feeling better. There we go. <laughs> All right, actually, it's getting pretty long. I'm, I'm feeling kind of nervous. Look how long that's getting. I'll just do this until it falls instead of having to tap it. So as you can see, I'm... S I, oh. Yeah. As you can see, I'm using my uh, whiskey stones today. I didn't want to dilute the fine scotch. This is, after all, a fine scotch, and uh, I'm not diluting it by using chilled whiskey stones. You take these stones, you put them in the freezer, 
and you get them really, really cold. They're nice and clean and hygienic, and you place them in your scotch, and it imparts a slight chill to your beverage. Bottoms up, ladies and gents. All right. I must recall uh, my adventure last night. Uh, was it last night? No, it was Tuesday night. So here's the, here's the skinny. Uh, in Seattle, Seattle is an incredibly repressive state when it comes to cigar smoking or any other kind of smoking. Basically, there are uh, baby murderers, lepers, and then tobacco users, as far as Seattle people are concerned. Uh, so uh, because of that, it's really hard to find a nice place to hang out with gentlemen of class and refinement and enjoy a stogie and a glass of scotch, scotch while talking about something uh, historical and full of time and meaning. Uh, so what I managed to discover, uh, I, I work in the tech industry here, I work for an internet startup, got a couple million dollars in funding, we're doing fairly well, we're gonna be profitable, uh, profitable business soon, and I'm enrolled in this uh, organization called Cigars and Startups. And what uh, they do is, it's limited to 30 members, and every couple of months, you get together, and uh, you smoke cigars in an undisclosed location, uh, it's called a smoke easy. Uh, we, we go to an undisclosed location, we smoke cigars, we talk about the internet and startups and just have a gentlemanly time. So uh, I showed up to this place, this is my second time going there, and um, you know, it's a real nondescript location. You have to drive through Seattle and get to sort of the, uh, the, the, the lower end part of the city, lots of train tracks and giant metal canisters and graffiti on solid concrete walls. Eh, you know, it's, it's a little sketchy. And the building itself is this concrete building, and the invitation says, look for the red door. So you look at this building, and you wouldn't think anything of it until you see a red door, and above it is this flickering fluorescent light, barely showing off the redness of the store. It's kind of hard to find. But uh, I, I walked up to the store, and there were other people coming to this smoke easy, and I ran into one gentleman who uh, was, you know, having the hardest time finding the place. But as the seasoned professional and veteran of this exclusive, exclusive cigar club, uh, I showed him the proper door, and I opened it for him. And you, you open the door and walk through, and then you're greeted by another red door with a key card access and a password and all this stuff. And you go through this red door, the second red door, and then you enter this wonderful room that smells of cinnamon and mahogany and you go up this wooden staircase to the very top and you're surrounded by leather furniture that is beautiful and pristine no holes in this leather furniture no scuffs it's just gorgeous looks like chocolate that you can sit in and the walls are paneled with wood and there were photograph or not photographs but oil paintings of c.s lewis and winston churchill and mark twain all of course smoking a gentlemanly stogie and uh, yeah, then we just mingle. We, we, you know, they gave out a, a generous selection of cigars. I had quite a few and we in, uh, enjoyed classy beverages and talked about the startups in Seattle and how hard it is to find angel investors and how venture capital is drying up for most people because they can't have access to the proper banks. And then we exchanged ideas for startup businesses and I met a guy who's going to be creating a company where if you wanted to go to a movie, but none of your friends wanted to go to a movie, you could just go onto your Twitter feed or your Facebook page and ask them to go to the movie with you. I'm not sure how the company's going to become profitable or why you would need them, but it was an interesting idea. And so we talked about startup ideas and, 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 and had a blast. So, uh, yeah, it was great. It was a fantastic time. Hopefully someday I will be able to broadcast my show from the innards of that club. Cheers. All right, it is that time uh, for your questions. Am, am I forgetting anything? I'm not forgetting anything. I'm not, no, okay. It's time for your questions. You have the questions. I have the answers. Uh, so we are going to be taking them on Twitter. Uh, let me get my Twitter program up here. You're going to hear some occasional bleeps and bloops. That's just the program I use to uh, conduct this fine show. Uh, pay no attention to them. And, of course, as always, you can post a comment in this chat. I will do my best to see them. But I do prefer if you send me a mention 
on Twitter, or post a comment using the Facebook contact form here at scotchandsmokerings.com. There's a nice little contact form if you scroll down a little bit. Uh, there's a form that you can input your comment and post with Facebook. I will respond to those as well. All right, here's one from John, uh, posted 28 minutes ago. Sorry for having the technical difficulties, but he asks, Hey, Ox, I just got a penny whistle for my birthday, and I was wondering if you had sheet music for the great Kodo. I couldn't find any. I'm sure others would want it, too. Good question. All right, we're going to take a little break here and have some penny whistle lessons. Stay tuned. If you don't have a penny whistle, you have 20 seconds to go to the store real quick and buy one. 19, 18, 17, 16. Ten. Two, one. All right. So here you go. Here you go, Gold Breath. Uh, this this is how you learn how to play the penny whistle. Um, now I never read sheet music when I learned how to play the penny whistle. Um, I actually subscribed to a guy on YouTube, and he's a Catholic priest. I forget his name, but he's also just an aficionado when it comes to the Irish flute or the penny whistle. And uh, I learned by listening, and that's the traditional way that penny whistle players learn how to play the, the penny whistle. They learn by listening. They just watch other people play and they uh, they uh, mimic it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the scale. This is a uh, D, a D penny whistle. It's just a normal, regular uh, octave. Look at my fingering. I'm going to go like this so that you can see my fingering if, if possible. Here, I'm actually going to tip this down so you can see my fingering. I'll put it up later, but, but just so you can see my fingering here. No, nope, still not on camera. Here we go. How about this? Yeah, here we go. All right, so this this is the scale. So that is the scale, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, now that you know it, having heard it for the first time and only once, and now that you have it memorized, we're going to play the Great Kodo. So here you go, Ghoul Breath. Here is how you play the Great Kodo. There you go. That is the Great Kodo, a.k.a. Um, King of the Fairies, which is, I believe, the name of the original uh, Irish song. And uh, I haven't played that in a few months, so I made one mistake. Eh, oh, well. There we go. Cheers, ladies and gents. Smoke ring time. Ha! All right, we got some Twitter... Uh, comments. Uh, Lol Daydreamer says, "Hey Oxron, you should consider switching to Twitch TV. It has less lag, and you can still have it through your website as well." Interesting suggestion. I uh, may consider doing that. I am not terribly fond of live stream. I have to admit. Um, Mike Chessel says, "Hey Ox, just wanted to get this out of the way early. What is your opinion on?" Coney, Invisible Children. Uh, I have a, a very strong and opinionated opinion on this, so I hope I don't offend anyone. But Coney Island is a place in New York where you can go and have a fun time because it's like a, a festival. There are rides, amusement rides, and uh, stuffed animals and cotton candy. And, you know, if you go there and you're surrounded by invisible children, they're not going to bother you. Because they're invisible, you can't see them. You know, you won't. Uh, you know, now, I okay. I understand. I understand. You guys think that I'm being trolled, or, or, or are you saying that I trolled 
Anyway, I'm not going to get into Coney and Invisible Children. Uh, I don't go to Coney Island to see Invisible Children, but I wouldn't be able to either way because they are invisible. So anyway, I just figured I'd, I'd throw that out there. Thank you for that. Uh, Nixonator on Twitter says, Do you ever use those suspenders that loop into buttons on your trousers? Or are you, are you a clip suspender uh, uh, kind of guy? Uh, great question. I'm neither. So if you're interested in suspenders, there's a fantastic suspender co a company called Hold 'em Up Suspenders. Go into Google and just type in Hold 'em Up Suspenders EM instead of them. And what it does is the suspenders have a needle inside them. And when you clip them onto your pants, the needle pierces your jeans or whatever pants you're wearing, uh, making it impossible for your suspenders to fly off. They're a great little tool. I, I really enjoy them. I wear them all the time. That said, I did just buy a brand new pair of twill uh, trousers. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to when they're getting delivered. And when they get here, I'm going to have buttons sewn into the waistband. And I will get a pair of those button-down suspenders. I did not say trousers, Irish. I said trousers. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Just saying. <laughs> what? All right, Catherine says, hey, Ox, do you consider guinea pigs to be classy? I'm trying to find a tiny hat for one. Uh, yeah, a guinea pig wearing a tiny hat reminds me of a South Park episode, but I, I think it, it's fantastic. Go for it. No shame. For rest ill on Twitter says, this is my first time watching you, Oxhorn. Rarely get off work on Thursdays. Well, I'm glad you're here. Pleasure to have you here. I hope to see you here more often. And, uh, you know, I understand work is important. So, by all means, you do your priorities. Um, <laughs> Thomasina Dory on Facebook says, <clears throat> Oxhorn, I was wondering if you still uh, collect cigar wrappers to one day build the cigar wrapper tower you once mentioned uh, on one of your shows and the answer is yes i've got all my cigar wrappers from every cigar i've ever smoked in jars in the other room and i'm not trying to create a cigar wrapper tower no 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 my goal is to create a mosaic made from cigar wrappers of c.s lewis's face that is my dream. I'm really, I'm really trying to collect as many cigar wrappers as I possibly can because someday I'm going to use a projector to project the visage of C.S. Lewis on a wall where I will tape a giant sheet of paper and use glue and tape to make a mosaic out of cigar wrappers. That is, uh, is my dream someday. Irish, it was trousers, not trousers. Ugh, never mind, I'm ignoring you. Troll hard. Uh, Mortus fan says, Dear Oxhorn, apologies for not being on in so long, but I'm back. Congratulations to you and Nova on your baby. Lighting a cigar for you. Thank you very much, uh, much uh, Mortus fan. It is a pleasure to have you here, and uh, good to see you again. We missed you. Irish on, on the chat says, Aw, come on, bro. Love you, no homo. Uh, thanks. I love you, no homo, too. Fearbone says, what's the longest lasting cigar you've ever smoked? Um, it was an Egg Maduro, I believe. Uh, and my brother and I smoked some Egg Maduros on this program a couple of times. And they're basically Churchill cigars, but the very middle of them has this big bulge, which is why they call it egg, because it looks like there's an egg inside. And those cigars probably took me, to, from start to finish, about two hours. It's also one of the best cigars I've ever had. It's a great cigar. Like a mugger, says uh, on Twitter, did you say something about making a new movie last week? No. no. Although I do have a new movie on the way. Uh, it's almost done. It has been almost done for almost a year. And I'll be releasing it soon. Soon. Sohik It Suni on Twitter says, chugging down some water, zero dollars. Enjoying scotch and smoke rings with my girl while I'm sick. Priceless. You, sir, are a classy gentleman. There is nothing better to watch when you're sick and when you're with a girl than scotch and smoke rings. Lady, you found yourself a classy gent. Uh, 
What? Gold Breath says that the smoke messed up my camera? Really? Did it? All right, I'm going to fix it. Hold on. Zzz. And then I slowly bring it back. Slowly bring it back. And hopefully by the time it reaches my face, we have ourselves a newly focused camera. Come on, camera. There you go. How's that? Tricks of the trade, my friends. Tricks of the trade. Oh, Mike Chessel says, Dear Oxhorn, what are your plans for next week's episode? Will it hold the appropriate Irishness for St. Paddy's Day? Great question. I forgot. No, I didn't forget. I mean, I knew, but I, I, I hadn't planned that next week is St. Patrick's Day. So last year, St. Patrick's Day also fell on a Thursday. And my brother and I uh, co-hosted the show, and then he, Mark, who plays the voice of Staghorn and myself, went to an Irish pub to have a great day of Irishness. Maybe we'll do the same thing. I should probably contact both of them to see uh, what they're up to. So hopefully an awesome show. Shamrock Suspender says Cranthier. Absolutely. What kind of... Uh, 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 St. Patrick's Day at scotchandsmokerings.com would it be without shamrock suspenders? Uh, Kyle on, on Facebook says, uh, Oxhorn, did my picture not go through or did you just not put it up because it wasn't completely Oxhorn fan art? Uh, I, I've posted everything that you've sent me. Uh, I probably didn't get it. Uh, truth is that I do only show Oxhorn fan art, so if you're sending me just a picture of your, uh, your step-cousin's grandma's kitty's toenail fungus grown into a stump i probably won't show it off in the show so make sure it's sort of oxhorn themed but yeah by all means send it to me again and use the contact form here at scotchandsmokers.com to send it to me i'll do my best to show it uh show it off thoughts on soviet ideas <laughs> sam nichols um thoughts the soviet union no longer exists i wonder what happened could it be the the entire world fit, uh, went against them or could it be that maybe their ideas weren't worth a darn? I don't know. Who am I to judge? All I'm going to do is drink some scotch. Cheers. Yogurt101 says, Is brisk lemonade tea classy? Um, it's, it's, yeah, there's nothing classy or unclassy about it. I would say, watch out for the sugar. As tasty as brisk lemonade tea is, and I do love it, it's very tasty, it's got a ton of sugar. Look at the calories on that thing. And then take a look at the carbs. You're just eating a whole bunch of liquid sugar is basically what you're doing. So, uh, hey, more power to you. Is the top hat classy, says Classy Lad. Indeed it is, but you have to be able to pull it off. Make sure you get one that fits, first of all. It's not too big. It's not supposed to go over your eyes. And, uh, you know, accompany it with some silk gloves and a monocle. You'll be surprised. You'll get some glances. And it'll all be pos uh, positive. Uh, Matt Ezel uh, says, Do you know of any Penny Whistle slash Fife tunes that are military-oriented, uh, such as those played during the Civil War? Um, great question. And sadly, no. The, the majority of the uh, Irish Penny Whistle tunes that I've learned have been Irish in origin. I haven't looked at uh, Civil War era tunes. Um... Aside from The Minstrel Boy, which I played earlier in part, uh, The Minstrel Boy is a war tune. And it's, I don't know if it's set for the Civil War, but it is a war tune. It's a good tune. So just Google The Minstrel Boy and you'll find a good war tune. Joe Hamilton says, what would be the most gentlemanly sport to take part in? Horse polo. That's right. Get yourself on a horse. Have a little helmet, a black helmet. Make sure you're wearing some tails. And they get like a, a croquet hammer, one of those big hammers. And uh, it's horse polo. Run around on your horse and knock around a bunch of balls. Wooden balls. Fencing, says Ghoulbreath. Fencing is indeed a gentlemanly sport. Thanks for that. Ox says Mex Joe. Hey, sorry about that. <laughs> Good question. We're going that one. Bowling? Yeah, I know. Bowling's not. I mean, maybe for Fred Flintstone, but. 
Yogurt says, on St. Patrick's Day, does a unicorn fight the leprechaun for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? Yes. Yes, he does. Uh, Jay Mixer says, Oxron, do you know of any websites that sell top quality top hats? Mine was destroyed by a cat. Yes, this one. You are at scotchandsmokerings.com. Um, I know you didn't know before, but you are. And if you look at the very top, you're going to see a link that says shop. If you click on shop, navigate to the hats section, you will find a fantastic collection of high quality top hats vetted by myself that are uh, that have a reasonable price tag. So by all means, if you're looking for a new, uh, new top hat, buy it right here from scotchandsmokerings.com. J Mixer says, I didn't see any last time. I did add some top hats recently, so there are some there. Patrica says, are you considering hiring new officers for your Scotch and Smoke Rings chat? I've noticed Ironbark hasn't been on as much. Yes, good question. Uh, I may have to vet some new officers. Uh, however, I do think uh, Ironbark is usually here, and he does a fantastic job. If anyone is interested in being a moderator for this chat or being an officer in my guild, feel free to send me a message. Gonzalo the Goblin says, I know you're not an anime fan, but I recommend watching an anime called Fairy Tale. It's a show about a young wizard and has nice Celtic soundtrack pieces. Um, I'll go into YouTube and see if I can find some, some excerpts. Uh, Nixonator says, so I honestly have to ask, have you ever tried musical theater or sang for a show? I think your voice would work well. I used to be in a choir in college, and I did perform in one opera in college, uh, and I had a fantastic time. It was fun. But that's the extent of my musical performances. Hmm. Have you played Skyrim yet? Asks Mortus Fan. If so, what are your thoughts? Have you thought about using it for Machinima? I was going to play Skyrim, but then I took an arrow to the knee, so I didn't. Chowdas says, the two album albums I have are awesome, but more. I need more. Uh, absolutely. I am working on some new music. Uh, I've got tons of ideas, and I'm actually working on a few new tracks. So stay tuned, and you will have some more music. Fuzroda says gold breath. Fuzroda. Fuzroda. <laughs> if you're going to say behind me quick, you got to type it faster so that I can. Look. No, there's no one behind me. There was no one there. John says, Oxron, would you look at my tweet or Facebook post, please? Buddy, I'm looking at everything. I've got three screens going on here, uh, and I'm doing my very best to answer as many questions as I can, but I can't promise that I'm going to answer yours, so please don't be offended. There are just a lot of people in this chat asking me all sorts of great questions. Nothing there. What are you guys talking about? There is nothing. It's a, it's a window, and I'm looking right through it, and there's nothing there. So uh, calm yourselves. This isn't a, a magical shop of horror. It's just me in front of a camera. So... Calm down. Alright, Facebook. I'm taking a look at Facebook. Give me a second here. Jonathan on Facebook says, Oxron, could you give my wife some digital hugs? She is trying to level a new tune and is having trouble. Absolutely. Here are some digital hugs all the way from a sunny Pacific Northwest. From Seattle. From Oxron. Digital hugs. Good luck on leveling your new tune. Hugs, hugs, hugs. Hugs, hugs, digital hugs from Oxhorn. Hugs, hugs, hugs. There you go. What? Okay, you guys are just trolling me now. It's not even funny. New house and everything. Whatever. I'm not looking next time. You can say it as much as you want, but I'm not looking. Mike says, hey, Ox, I've got a good website for some very classy hats. Check out... All right, hold on. Before I actually say the name of that URL, I'm going to go online and make sure it really is what it is. So let's see. Uh, 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 uh. All 
All right, here we go. Oh, cannot find server. Oh, I spelled it wrong. All right, hold on. All right. Oh, affordable authenticity since 1983. Is this more Civil War era stuff? Yeah. Right. Original relics. Look, I don't need some dead knight's left elbow, all right? All right, if you guys want a dead knight's left elbow, check out uh, Blockade Runner Civil War Salter. BlockadeRunner.com. There you go. Cheers. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Good question. Patrick on uh, uh, Facebook says, Hey, Ox, I remember bringing up pocket watches during last week's episode, seeing as I have a great interest in them. If I were to purchase one, do you have any certain variations you would recommend? Uh, yes, my personal penchant when it comes to pocket watches. And honestly, I don't go out and buy them. I was gifted one by an awesome fan, by the way. One of you, who shall remain nameless because he didn't give me his name, bought me an awesome pocket watch, and it just happens to be the kind of pocket watch that I wanted. Um, but what I would get is... Um, you want you want to be able to so so the the clasp of a pocket watch if you snap it shut often it'll wear out so you want a pocket watch that's not going to wear out so fast so my personal preference is get a pocket watch that either has a glass uh window in the case so that you can see the time without having to open it or somehow has a has, a, has an opening in it uh get one that has distinct numbers on it the ones without just get confusing and you won't use it because you won't be able to read the time uh, you want something with jewel movements. If it doesn't have jewel movements, it's going to wear out faster. And my personal preference is to get one that you crank. It may have a small battery in it to just sort of keep it going, but one that you have to crank every time you want to check the time, uh, just because it's it's classy. Nixon Ender says, say, personal penchant for pocket watches. Five times fast. Personal pension for pocket watches, 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 personal pension for pocket watches. Totally. Like, hello, I'm going to go to get Dairy Queen BBQ. Alright. Y'all, I see it. What? Okay, not saying that. Troll much. Smoke ship time says ghoul breath. No, not yet. I had you know, technical issues at the beginning of the show, and I would hate to rob you guys. So you guys get an extra 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 15 minutes that are yours. What would you like to see in these 15 minutes? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers. The peck of pickle peppers, Peter Piper picked it. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers. Where's the peck of pickle peppers? Peter Piper picked? It says Ninja 299? I don't know. That's a good question. I'll look it up. Jonath84 says, Where did you get your electronic pipe and how much was it? I'm looking for something that will allow me to be classier without nicotine. Um, I, I forget the name of the website where I found it. Uh, I'll, I'll try and... Uh, I'll try and tweet out where I found it later so that you can buy it there. It, but it, it did come from China, yeah. It was a Chinese electronic pipe. Lol Daydreamer on Twitter says, So why does Clout feel you are influential in shoes? I mean, sure, your shoes are classy as well, but that's a good question. I don't know why they think I'm influential in shoes. Clout is strange that way. They scan all of my social media. And then they tell me what they think I'm influential influential with. I think once I posted a picture of all of my shoes after I had just um, shined them. Once. And for some reason now they think I'm influential with shoes. Whatever. <laughs> they did get World of Warcraft right. Right? So my, at the top of my influential list on Cloud is World of Warcraft. So they got that right. But shoes? Really? Thank you. 
Uh, Mortis Finn says, electronic pipes and cigarettes do use nicotine, but you can get nicotine-free liquid. Exactly. The, the one that I have has no nicotine in it, and it tastes the same way, produces the same amount of smoke. I like it. It's great. So yeah, if you want to smoke a pipe or cigar, get an electronic pipe or cigar. No nicotine. Uh, yeah, okay, so Patrick says, How is your hippie neighbor? Got any more stories about him yet? Cheers, Oxhorn. Yeah, so, all right. I was heading to work yesterday. And another neighbor of mine came out. His name is Thor. Great guy. Really interesting. And as I was coming out the door getting ready to get my car, he stopped me and we chatted for a little bit. And he came real close to me and he says, Brandon, um, apparently... You put your trash in the recycling bin last week, and uh, they got mixed up. Ended up being okay. The garbage guys just took the trash out. But, uh, yeah, you mixed them up, and Tom was really upset. Then he kind of paused a minute and says, you know what? Tom's a little anal about that. I wouldn't worry too much about it. And I'm like, yeah, I've noticed Tom tends to be a little anal about that. I, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting ride living in this area, an interesting ride. A lot of hippies. Matt says, Ox, there's nothing behind you. Whatever you do, don't bother looking. Thank you. I've, I've been worrying about that this entire time, straining my neck muscles, and it just, it just really weighed on me heavily. But now that I have read your comment reassuring me that there's nothing behind me, I feel like a weight has been lifted on my shoulders. I just, I'm happy. I'm gonna be able to enjoy the rest of this evening. Uh, without worrying. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh man. Did I blur out the camera? No, it's still good, right? Yeah. Uh, Irish says, Ox, I'm sure you get this all the time, but I can't remember what realm you play in. Help me out, man. Silverhand. I play on Silverhand. All right, there's one more question. All right, Chukaka says, Oxhorn, what are your thoughts on Joseph Coney? I'm really curious. I don't know Joseph Coney. I've never met Joseph Coney. I didn't even know a Joseph Coney existed until somebody said, Hi, there's a person out there named Joseph Coney. I don't know him, and I'm not going to talk about him. I will say that child murder is evil. Yeah. So there you go. All right, um, I'm a cute little hardcore kitten says, Oxhorn, I know you don't, uh, I don't know how to tell you this, but there's an elf behind you stealing all your meat and replacing it with tofu. Just thought you should know. Thanks. Ah, but that's a bummer. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to turn around. I'm not going to fall for it, but thanks. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, Mortis Fan says, Oxron, check your Brandon page on Facebook. I left you a message on there. I'd appreciate it very much if you could check it before the day ends. All right, I'll check it now. I want to check it right now. I'm going to read it to the world. You guys ready? All right, let's see what Mortis Fan had to say. All right. All right, All right I want to. Let's do it. What do we got? Yeah? Hmm. See if we can find it. Man, Facebook. Yeah, right, here we go. All right, I'm gonna read it out loud. Are you ready? <clears throat> you know what? That was a great letter, and I actually uh, agree. I think it's a great idea. Um, I'll chat with Nova about it, and we'll see if we can get that done. All right. Cool. Cool. 
Beautiful sentence, says Ninjatu99. No, no, I'm just... We've got great diction. Uh, John says, thanks again for the Penny Whistle lesson. I'll watch it on the website over and over again, and hopefully I'll know the great Kodo by heart in a month. Awesome. And if you, take a recording of yourself playing it, and I'll post it out to all my followers. Uh, uh what? <laughs> okay, Forrest on Twitter says, with sunlight being an hour later on Sunday, will you post, point the camera outside, like the Today Show, to see the folks? Um... Yeah, I would, but there's no folks here. It's just kind of like my house. Look. Curtains. Nothing terribly exciting. Not a lot of people hanging outside holding signs going, Yay, Oxhorn! Yay, Oxhorn! Uh, I wish that that were true. And the day that happens, I will, of course, show the lot of you. Chris Walsby says, please check your Facebook. I'll have to comment for your latest update. All right. Hold on. Uh, hey, Ox, do you remember the Reckoning Bomb? If so, did you ever use it? No, I don't remember the Reckoning Bomb. I'm sorry. What's a Reckoning Bomb? The Day of Reckoning? I'm slightly confused. Chukaka says, I live in Bellevue, only 20 minutes away. That's not very far at all. I, uh, Nova and I go to Bellevue often. Whoa. Okay, one thing about the Afluente is that it's hard to take the wrapper off. But there we go. All right, lady. What? No. <laughs> Not answering that. <laughs> you guys are funny. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. It is time for the smoke ship. Uh, as always here at scotchandsmokecreams.com, I blow a smoke ship into existence. I am one of those men that has been blessed enough to have the powers to turn smoke into any number of beautiful animate or inanimate objects. So uh, what would you like to see? What is on your mind? Come up with a great idea, and I will do my very best to create it for you. Oh, Irish uh, says, classy word of the day. Classy word of the day. Improbulous. Improbulous. The possibility that that word even exists is improbulous. <laughs> All right, we have it. Yes, Ninjatu Improbulous. Uh, Oxhorn takes a classy lint roller and removes the bad day from his suspenders. Flames spew from the cannons to prevent a wall of freezing to take over the SS Ox ship. Say that time, five times fast. An alternative universe of the smoke ship has a cloud unicorn circling the ship. The unicorn's feet are over a mustache socks and, and it gallops in the sky. Okay. Nova sits in a chair, sipping scotch with scotch stones, while wearing a magic blanket so the baby is not harmed by the scotch. The blanket is heavily designed with bacon imprints and pink. Yes, pink. The chair she sits in is made of leather, and as in all the furniture on the ship. The penny whistle radio plays off the great Kodo as many gentlemen dance wearing pin suspenders. Bean comes out of nowhere playing horse polo on deck while wearing a top hat. Yippee. Wow, I have to admit, that was very well thought out. Patrick says a bacon wrapped submarine teaching his young. I end up flew off the screen, sorry. Oxhorn and a pink unicorn chasing elves and gnomes while one hides in the lawn. Gnomes and Mr. Evil chasing beggars at gold farming elves. Wow, okay. Mike says Ox wearing an Irish wristwatch in a golden hybrid coat drawn bacon biplane. Running off scotch and smoke eminent. Oh, it runs off scotch while smoke is emanating from the triple rainbows, which are playing Irish rovers using a crop duster to cover the earth with shamrocks and beginning the nine-day-long transformation into an Irish lad to prepare the earth for the next episode, whilst a horde of not-visible kids on Coney Island eat delicious hot dogs. 
I love you guys. I have to admit it. You guys are just the best. You know that? Jonathan on Twitter says, Nova chasing I'm a little hardcore kitten off a bacon zeppelin into a sea of terrors that Oxhorn has had to endure today. <laughs> That's great. I'm a cute little hardcore kitten says, I don't think I'm going to try and make a smoke ship anymore. The other people are far more creative. What are you talking about? You are a very creative person. I'm a cute little hardcore kitten. So, by all means, continue. The Carrier Enterprise, the decks lined with bacon, planes landing with bacon wheels, while Nova plays the penny whistle, and Ox is looking for the don'ts for husbands, which is missing, says Ben. <laughs> Very nicely done. You guys are really creative today. I gotta admit, I like it. <laughs> How about elves raiding Ox's fridge and Nova chasing them with giant bacon wrapped club club with a giant bacon wrapped club? Well, that's a good one. Oxhorn chasing his neighbors who are hippie elves and hiding in stag kicking gnomes into heavy traffic? Violence towards elves and gnomes all in one smoke ship? This is unprecedented. Again, I like it. Oh man, I get to ban someone. That was fun. I don't always get to ban people on my own show, but that was fun. Ox and Stag on a flying ship made out of pecan pie and bacon, punting gnomes overboard while Nova waits below to decapitate before landing. Whoa. Nice. Nicely done. Ben Schultz says, do you wear pantaloons? Of course. I'm a classy gentleman. All classy gentlemen have at least one pair of pantaloons in their armoire. All right. Oh, it sounds like uh, Mike has uh, uh, given us another smoke ship idea. Ox wearing an Irish, wis an Irish wristwatch. Wow. Irish wristwatch. Uh, in a golden hybrid coto, drawn bacon biplane running off of scotch and smoke emanating triple rainbows playing Irish rovers. Okay, so he elaborated on his previous one. Using a crop duster to cover the earth with shamrocks and beginning the not lying. Okay, I read that one earlier. Uh, unicorn shaped clouds wearing monocles spew out of. S monocles spew out and fight the hordes of hipsters who hate everything mainstream, including celebrating St. Patrick's Day. Uh, that's true. That's true. Hipsters do hate everything mainstream. And their hatred of things mainstream has become a mainstream hate. Um, Mortis fan says, Oxen stag on a flying ship made out of pecan, pecan pie and bacon, punting gnomes overboard while Nova waits below to de decapitate before landing. Oh, wait, I already read that one, didn't I? All right. What about live stream? Dang, hipsters, says Irish... I'm sure the hipsters hate live stream as well. So many people are using it. It's got to be mainstream, and anything mainstream is hated. The only things that are under they only like things that are undiscovered. Once the things they like that are undiscovered become discovered, well, they no longer like them. It's those things that have changed, not them. Bacon wrapped submarine with Oxhorn teaching his his young how to play the penny whistle. Paul Nova recruits officers as they eat hippie elves for supper. All right. While I'm teaching my young? You mean my children? Oh. Okay. I like it. A bacon ship firing cannonballs made of bacon while Nova plays the penny whistle, uh, waving the don'ts for husbands. Oh, well, and that flew off the screen. I get to ban someone again. Oxhorn playing bagpipes while Bean plays accordion on a flying bacon ship of sea elves. <laughs> Alright. Alright, I like the golden wristwatch hybrid Kodo idea. That sounds really classy to me. Are you guys ready? It's 8.15. It is time for a smoke ship. Here we go. Don't blink. If you blink, you're going to miss it. But here we go. Smoke ship time.
Wow! Whoo -wee. I gotta admit, that was a hard one to do. It took all of my time, energy, and strength, but it was there. Right before your eyes, for the briefest of moments, we had me wearing an Irish rich watch, wristwatch on my wrist. In a golden hybrid Kododron bacon biplane, that's right, golden hybrid Kododron bacon biplane, running off scotch and smoke emanating triple rainbows, playing the Irish rovers using a crop duster to cover the earth with shamrocks and beginning the nine-day-long transformation into an Irish lad to prepare the earth for the next episode, whilst a horde of not visible kids on Coney Island Eat delicious hot dogs. Yes, and that was all in the smoke ship that I just blew. I wasn't reading from the screen just then, no. I just happened to be looking in that direction while uh, remembering what I created. Cheers. <laughs> Fantastic idea, Michael Chessel. That was a great idea. <laughs> Usually that's where you wear a wristwatch. Ox says Irish. Yes, I was wearing a wrist rot watch on my wrist. Wearing a wrist watch on my wrist. I think I need some dinner or something. Anyway, thank you very much for coming to this week's episode of Scotch and Smoke Rings, episode 137. Technical issues aside, I think it was a fairly su uh, successful episode. Thanks so much for coming, and be sure to tune in same Ox time, same Ox channel next week. ScotchandSmokeRings.com for episode 138. That's right, we are f uh, flying through the the months, the days, and the years uh, with a plum. A plum. Thanks, everybody, for coming, and as always, ladies and gentlemen, be sure, my friends to stay classy.